another awesome day to be in the land of the living. Another opportunity we can come together and give God the glory and the honor with the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto him. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your grace. We don't thank him enough, and we don't honor him enough, and that which he, we know he's doing because of who he is. Hallelujah. And it's, I was just listening to something the other day. It's not because of who he is. If it's not because of what he did, but it's because of who he is Amen. that we honor him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a good God. So uh, we're going to get started here. The signs of time is going to be what we're going to talk about today. Many ministered to me the way the Lord gave me this message. So I pray you get uh, something out of this that ministers to you. Uh, my wife has got the psalmist moment as we get started. She's going to read us the psalms and then we'll get right into the preaching of the gospel. Uh, this psalm comes from Psalm 17, verse 6. I have called upon thee, for thou wilt hear me, O God. Incline thy ear unto me, and hear my speech. Show thy marvelous loving kindness, O thou that savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee. From those that rise up against them, keep me as the apple of thy eye, hide me under the shadow of thy wings. Hallelujah. Psalms 17.6. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for the Psalms, the reading of the Psalm. I hope you're reading and studying and, and reading Psalms, if nothing else. Reading Proverbs, if nothing else. Reading the book of John, if nothing else. Reading the Gospels. Just read it and seek it. I had a guy tell me one time that, uh, well, you know, uh, I don't, I read the Bible, but I don't, I don't study. I said, well, you know, read it anyway. I pray you study. The Bible tells us to study to show ourselves approved. And that doesn't mean if you read a certain amount and you study a certain amount, that approves you. But it's to show you approved because God has already put it in the scripture that which he wants us to see to develop us in the mentality that God is on the, chain, on the changing efforts of giving us, getting us to change, develop us, to grow us, and to bring us into the generation of continuation from death through us part to eternity with him. That's what we're going to be talking about today, the signs of time. When I began to ask the Lord about this message for this week, and, his, and he began to speak to me as I'm mowing, mowing on the, on the lawnmower. That's when I listen to worship music and I'm kind of pondering in my heart. But he said to me this, y'all. He said, from the beginning of time, I've, I've always desired to demonstrate my glory through people and through places and through things. And he said, I want to bring people to a place of believing to live personally and give a measure of faith. He gives everyone a measure, the measure of faith. The measure it means he gives everybody the same measure of faith to come to him. And he, he does that freely. And when he gives you that measure of faith to come to him, then he shows through that all the things that he wants to show you spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and all. You can look and see things after to what you see in uh, the creation. Even the creation demonstrates the glory of God. What does that mean, James? I'm glad you asked. Here's the thing. If you look up and see the sun rising in the east, going to the west, springtime, fall, winter, summer, all the seasons changing, God did that. And he did that for a sign. The scripture teaches us that. And we're going to get into the word here. But it like, it's just like you. If, if you can remember, if you're not, if you got a memory long enough, Remember this if you're older as I am or older. I can't remember when I got my license, driver's license. But remember this if you can remember. When you get ready to go get your driver's license, you study and brief up on the test. You get a little book, you brief up on it, you study it, and look at it. And you understand that you know the traffic signs and the specific laws that they want you to abide by. And then if you know, if you once you get your license and you're going home and your parents say, well, you can drive home, you got your license today. Now, as you're driving, 
the person in front of you, 50 feet, 100 feet, when they put their signal on to the left, you know that they turn turning to the left. Why? Because it's a sign. It's a sign given to you by the signal light that got, that, that car is supposed to turn. So you'll make appropriate mental perceptions that this car is to turn. I need to be cautious, whatnot. Because if you see vehicles in another lane approaching you, you'll know that this car has got to turn in front of these vehicles, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying. But God began to give me that visualization yesterday or day uh, Thursday when I was getting to think about this. And he said, you know that they're turning off to the left because they left signal on. He said, that's the way it is in a spiritual realm. You should be able to see the signs of time and know that I'm doing what I'm doing. And people say, well, it's getting so evil and getting so evil. God going to return pretty soon, all this evil going on. Well, that's not what made God turn, return all the evil. What makes him return is, is that he made all his enemies his footstools. He makes all it as according to the Bible. And that he, the gospel be preached to everyone. That's his returning point. Nobody knows that time, but are you sharing the gospel? Are you living a life that demonstrates a sign that he's a true and living God? Are you doing that? If you're watching, if you're doing that, he, as you hear? So let's get into the word, what God showed me, he said, from the beginning of time. So if you believe the Bible, let's look at this first scripture the Lord gave me. Here, I adjusted my screen, I hope you see that better. Uh, here in Genesis chapter 1, the first place you see signs in the Bible. And this is what it said. And God said, chapter 1, verse 14 through 16. And God said, let there be lights. Lights, plural. In the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs. So when you know that it's sun setting in the evening, you know it's supposed to be dark, right? You know when the sun is coming up in the east, you know it's supposed to be light. Why? Because he said it was going to divide the day from the night because that's a sign to you. Stay with me here. And watch this. Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. So has it changed any for y'all? It ain't changed none for me. I see the day. I see the night. I see the evening, and I see the light, dark and light. I see it for seasons, days and years. Scripture goes on to say, And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. The verse 16 said, And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. And says he made the stars also. When God gave me that scripture there, for the first place you see signs in the Bible, a lot of things start going through my head about signs. Although we talk about the seasons and the days and the years, but here's what started going through my mind at that time. I said, Lord, remind me of this. Help me to remember this where I can reiterate this. What came through my mind was this. If God gave us the light, and God gave us the dark, and it separates the light and the dark, that should be a sign to you that if you walk in the light, as John says over in 1 John 2, if you walk in the light, as he's in the light, you have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all unrighteousness. That's what came to my mind. That means if I'm cleansed from all unrighteousness, I'm walking in the light. And it's a differentiation for me walking in the light than the way I used to walk because I didn't always walk in the light. I walked in some darkness. So when we look at that word sign there in the scripture, that word sign is defined as a signal, literally or figuratively, as a flag or a beacon. And then it says it could be evidence or a mark or a token. And get this right here. It could be a distinguishing mark. So anytime you see that sun going down, it's a distinguishing mark that it's supposed to be dark. 
Anytime you see that sun coming up, it's a distinguishing mark that it's going to be daylight. And it is what it is. So let's put this in a spiritual application and look at somebody in the biblical context of this and see what was he given to show him the direction, the guidance, to show him the light, if you would, from darkness, to show him how he is to do what God called him to do. Because guess what? The signs of time is manifested in your life as well as it is in my life. Day by day, it's manifested in my life. The signs of time. The signs of, am I changing? Am I growing? Am I getting heavier? Am I losing weight? Am I combing my hair? Am I losing my hair? I mean, it's just the signs of time. You see me? The, boy, you bald head, ain't you? Well, it's the signs of time. It's hereditary. And, and my granddaddy was bald in the top, but I guess I'm going to be bald too. It's the sign of time. So, let's go into the scriptures. God gave Moses an assignment to go to Pharaoh and to give him a message to say, let my people go in the scripture. And then we see that he first showed Moses a supernatural intervention and then he uses what he did as a, in a possession of that. He showed him a sign. Moses went up on the hill and his bush was burning and the bush, and bush was not consumed but it was burning and that was a sign to Moses that God was a God that could do what he was doing in his visual. Moses saw it but Moses didn't understand it. He said take off your shoes Moses because you're on holy ground. And so when I was thinking about that I was where you want me to go, Lord? And Lord, carry me to Exodus chapter 4 about Moses. And here's what he's talking about the sign. It says this in Exodus 4, the first 10 verses. Stay with me. It says, And Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, because he's sending Moses to go to Pharaoh. He said, They will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, the Lord had not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, what is, what is that in thine hand? And he said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground. And it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. Can you imagine if God speaking to you and he said, what you got in your hand? And I said, an ink pen, Lord. And he said, throw that ink pen on the ground. And I threw that ink pen on the ground, and it turned into a lizard. And a kabota, if you would, a big kabota. And then I said, wow, oh, man, that would be scary. Can you imagine Moses doing that? And God showed him that rod turning into a serpent. Well, watch this, it gets better. Verse 4 says, and the Lord said unto Moses, put forth thy hand and take it by the tail. And put forth, and he put forth his hand, he caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. Now he was already afraid of it because it turned into a serpent. But then he obeyed God's direction, grabbed it by the tail, and he picked it up and it turned back to a rod. Wow, what a miraculous sign that God gave Moses to show Moses that he to do what he was sending Moses to do through the guidance of God himself. God's got plans for you. God's got plans for me. Well, how can I do this, James? Well, I'm glad you had. Moses didn't know how he could do it either, but he had the one that was going to carry him because the scripture goes on to say, verse 5, after he said, pick it up, and the rod was in his hand, verse 5 said, and they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, had appeared unto thee. Now, how was he going to... I'm thinking this in my logical, okay? In my logical reasoning. How did, was he going to think that the people were going to believe him just because God told him to throw that rod down it turns to a serpent? He tells him to pick it up, and he picks it up. He said, now, what is that, how is that going to prove to the people? I'm thinking... Like what Moses was thinking. How's that going to prove to the people, Lord? Well, here, watch this. 
He just ministered to me. Hope it ministers to you. Verse 6 there, and the Lord said, furthermore, unto him, furthermore. <laughs> Can you give, put now thine hand into thy bosom. And put his, and he put his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. Can you imagine? Put your hand in your bosom. He slides it in there, and then he pulled it back out, and it's leprous as snow, as the scripture said. Watch this. And he said in verse 7, put that hand into that bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again, and he plucked it out of his bosom, and behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. Right back like it was. Hmm. Verse 8 said, And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And God began to share something with me when I read that part. He said, If you not look back in history, James, and see the previous presidents, if you would, and how they did, and how the nation did great, or how they did against God's will, and how the nation was in a rep repercussion of what the decisions they made. Just like your life. You're going to be a repercussion of the decisions you make. And God was just showing me that. He said, look at history. History repeats itself. If you think about that, history repeats itself. And what they, we see now, if we look at the Bible, God began to show me as I was writing more, the more he said, and what you see now, James, if you don't have spiritual eyes to see, you'll miss what they seen in those days with the familiar spirits that was operating in them when they caused the children to pass through the fire. Now today, it's a different now. It ain't causing them to pass through the fire to kill the children and sacrifice it to the enemy. They do them, kill them in the womb. And I said that, and I say it again. Because that's the same spirit that was working in them in that time, Molech, Baal, Ashtoreth, those gods, they was working then and they're working now. That's right. But they're working differently. Do you see the signs of the time? Over uh, many people have been killed. Since Roe versus Wade, I'm gonna say this on the camera. And there's a that many men killed since Roe versus Wade as to account for the population of Australia. That's right. That many people have been killed. That's right. Children. They don't have a voice. You know why they don't have a voice? Because the spirit of ignorance and the spirit of deception is working in the people. Let's go a little further. I don't want to get off on that track. Hallelujah. But he told them that if they didn't believe the first sign, they'll believe the latter sign. Now watch these last two verses. And it shall come to the pass if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land, and the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. He was setting Moses up then when he said, they didn't see them one sign, and they don't, you throw that rod down, and they don't see that, as you serving a true and living God, and they don't see you sticking your hand in, and turning lepers, and bringing it out, sticking it back in, and it's turning back to flesh. If they don't follow that, I'll bring forth some more signs that'll show forth the reference men reformating of what I'm going to do to them if they don't abide by let my people go. And so I'm, I'm, I'm getting all this as God was showing this to me. Verse 10 says, And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I'm not eloquent, neither herefore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. Now Moses said, well, God, if you show them the first sign of the rod and they don't believe it, and they show them the second sign of me reaching my hand in and they don't believe it, then he's going to cause the blood to change the waters 
to blood, and they don't believe it. Now you're going to say, if you can do all that, what about poor me? Are they going to believe me? Because I'm slow of speech. I, 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 I stutter. You know, he went on to say that. But watch this. We look at that for the sake of time. I had a lot of uh, explanational stuff I wanted to share, but for the sake of time, from verse 11 all the way to 29 in the chapter 4 of Exodus, Moses was assisted by his brother Aaron because God said, well, if you say you can't talk, I'm going to take that excuse out of the way. That's right. I'm going to give you your brother Aaron. He's going to go with you. He can speak eloquently. He can speak for you. He can open up his mouth and speak. So from verse 11 all the way to 29 of that chapter, God gave Moses assurance that he was going to be able to do this because he was going to send his brother with him. Now we jump into verse 30 and 31, and he says this right here. And Aaron spake all the words which the Lord had spoken unto Moses, and he did the signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed. Now what's that saying to me right there already? That if you see a sign that God is showing himself mighty, you see a sign that as long as the seasons are changing, the fall and the winter, you see all this stuff going on, can you not believe that God is wanting to use you for to bring glory to his name? Hallelujah. Watch this. Last verse says here in this chapter 4 of Exodus, and the people believed, and when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel, and that he had looked upon their affliction, then they bowed their heads and worshipped. Now I just want you to get this, because here we are with this in the reference of what God is doing and Moses trying to back out of it because he had excuses for himself and God took that out of the way and told him I'm going to give you all kinds of signs. We look at ten more signs from chapter uh, four all the way to chapter ten. From seven to ten chapter, we see the plagues that God began to bring about to show signs. First the water turned to blood. Then the frogs. Then he bought lice. Then he put flies out there flying everywhere, all over the place. And then he said, well, huh, I can make them understand something here because they got to eat, don't they? Then he took their livestock and they had a severe pestilence and it killed all the domestic animals that was there except the ones that were in Israel. God was watching over his people. God's watching over his people today. But you can't be ignorant. After he killed all the livestock in Egypt, he brought boils upon the people. And the animals had boils, even. That was the sixth plague. Then the seventh plague, hell came. And hell, was everything that was there, hell destroyed, hitting it, knocking it down, and all the vegetations and the things that they had. And what was not knocked down by the hell in that Seventh plague, in the eighth plague, he sent locusts to eat the rest of it up. Now, God was just showing himself mighty because he was letting Moses know, I can do, I can bring it to pass, I can show you that I, people say God's in control. God's sovereign. And when people say he's in control, I say, well, what is your part in this That's relation right. to control? God has always been the man. God has always been the one that got the whole world in the palm of his hand and he's sovereign but he's got responsibility for you and for me you and I have a responsibility so we look at that after that I, I, I was really impressed at looking at that and thinking about that can you imagine I didn't live in that time but can you imagine seeing all that going on and God was in doing it because he was bringing a sign for Pharaoh to let his people go. And this is what topped it off. Pharaoh still hadn't, hadn't did anything related to that. And guess what? God hardened his heart. I think it was seven to nine times God hardened Pharaoh's heart because he wanted Pharaoh to think that he was all that in a bag of chips and he's going to let Pharaoh know I stick a pin in him and bust your balloon. So in the ninth plague, darkness fleed over the land. 
And all that land around was dark, except in Goshen. It was daylight in Goshen, but it's darkness all over the other place. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? Then the last plan came, which opens up a door to bring forth what the sign is for standing, me standing here today. The sign of the, the time when God said, all right, Every child is going to die. Every male child is going to die one year and below. I think it was three years and below. It was, a, it was a requirement that they, they was all going to die. He's going to send a death angel and going to kill them. Except you take the blood and apply across your post, your doorpost, your lentils, put the blood of an of a animal. They took a blood sacrifice put over their door post. And that was what they called a Passover. That the, when the death angel came, he had to pass over the houses that had the blood on it. That's, right. That's a sign right now that I'm still here. That's a sign right now that you're still here. That's a sign right now that you're saved and set apart and have a reason for God's purpose in your life. Because you've got blood applied to you. And the, and the enemy can't approach you without going up to the Lord with that blood being applied to your heart. So keep that in mind. It's the Passover. That was the last plague, but then that opened up a door right there. The Jewish holiday uh, uh, Passover in a, in a Hebrew is called the Pesach. The Pesach. I might be saying that Hebrew word wrong, but it's the Pesach. And it commemorates the exodus of the Jewish people from the enslavement in Egypt. That was a sign to say that from now on, whosoever believeth upon the Lord should not perish. From now on, they that call on the name of the Lord, he's going to answer. From now on, it's not his will that anyone should perish, but that all to come to repentance. That brought forth the Passover, the sacrifice, the Paschal Lamb, and through that, Jesus and John the Baptist saw him coming in John 1 and 29. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. I hope he's a, a, applying the blood to you today as a sign that he's covered you. And your sins have been forgiven. And therefore, you're walking according to the will of the Father. Hallelujah. Now, we see that if you have a blood applied through that demonstration on your doorpost, which is your heart, you can see the signs in the time because God always will take care of his own. He took care of them in that day. We see in the book of uh, Exodus here, chapter 10, 1 through 6, it says this. Go forward, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I might shoot these my signs before him. And that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son and in thy son's son what things I have wrought in Egypt and my signs which I have done among them that ye may know. What? That ye may know how that I am the Lord. That's the whole key of God showing them signs. You know that he's the Lord. He's the Lord our God. Jesus said like this in John 14 and 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one cometh to the Father but by me. But listen to these rest of these verses here. And Moses and Aaron came unto Pharaoh and they said unto him, Thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, How long will thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go that they may serve me. Else, it, if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow will I bring the locusts into the, thy coast. Now all these other plagues that happened, the other seven that happened, this was coming into the part where the eighth plague, the locusts was going to come, then prior to the ninth, which is the three days of darkness, and the tenth, which was the, the killing of the children, the destroying of the Young ones. All right. 
Verse 5 says that they shall cover their face of the earth. That one cannot be able to see the earth. I'm talking about these locusts. And they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped, which remaineth unto you from the hell. And shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the field. Can you imagine all the green that you look out the window now and see? And it's coming into fall season and we won't be able to see that for long. But all that that you see now with your eyes, that the locusts came in in that day, that it was, it was greenish in that area, ate all that up. God showed that as a sign. And then verse 6 he said, And they shall fill thy houses and the houses of thy servants and the houses of all the Egyptians, which neither thy fathers nor thy father's father have seen since the day that they were upon the earth until this day. And he turned himself and he went out from Pharaoh. Now here's Moses and Aaron telling Pharaoh, laying down the law to him. If you don't let the people go, this is what's going to happen. All this that the, that the hell didn't kill, the locusts going to come in and tear it and eat every bit of it. And everybody going to know it in every house and every place across this area going to know that God has done this because you've not humbled yourself unto the Lord. And so when I read that, the next chapter, the next scripture God gave me was Psalms 37. And it says this, Psalms 37, 30, 25 through 28, he said, I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lender, and his seed is blessed. His seed is blessed. I'm in a seed right now. I'm blessed. No matter what I deal with, I'm blessed. Had a little incident on the track the other day, and boom, I could have cried because I knew it was going to be a cost involved. I knew it was going to delay me from doing my job and get my assignment done. But guess what? I thought about it a little while and called somebody and we talked. I'm blessed. I'm just still blessed and highly favored. The scripture says in verse 27, Depart from evil. And do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. I pray you get that grasp of what the Lord was saying in that. He takes care of those that he is, but the seed of the wicked is going to be cut off. He never seen the what the righteous forsaken. He don't forsake his saints, but he preserves them. Hallelujah. Then we see where Isaiah prophesied. He's a major prophet. The Lord put this in. I'm looking at the word sign in the Bible. This is where Isaiah came in, Bob. And this was to reiterate what I said a while ago about what John saw. But here's the word in chapter 7 of Isaiah 10 through 14. Moreover, the Lord spake unto, again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. In other words, he said, you want a sign either from the firmament above or in the earth in the depth below. Where you want a sign at? He asked Ahaz. But then he said in verse 12, Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary man? But will ye weary my God also? Guess what? You're not going to weary God. And he might be a little bit ooh despair about the sins of the nation that no God or suspect proclaim to know God, he might know that his heart is getting heavy because of the people not walking according to his wills. That's where I can remember the scripture in 2 Chronicles 7 saying, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I heal their land. That's what he's waiting on. He showed us the signs right now. We see them right now. You got people in the administration saying that 
you're wrong if you say that a man can't choose his own pronoun when he's a biological man? Come on. You say that's not right and you get gaudy for that? There's something wrong with that picture. Ask me. Something wrong with it. But verse 14, it says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. And you know what Emmanuel means, don't you? God with, with us. us. And guess what? He's right here with us now, church. He's right here with us now. He's with you in the midst of your sin. He's with you in the midst of your goodness. He's with you in the midst of your transitions of day-to-day -day endeavors. He's with you. He's with us. He's here. He's showing us right now from a visual sign of what we see going on. If my people that's called by my name, you better be humble. You better be called on the name of the Lord. Why? Because it, it's not going to get no better with who we got administrating for us. Because they're going to keep putting sin out there, painting a picture for the young people to see, saying this is all right. This is all right. You want to make a decision at five years old to change? Then you can change your whole bio, bio, biographic design. You can change it. No, that don't work. I'm giving it to you like the Lord gave it to me. It's a, it's a sign right now. We should see this. There was 700 years from the time Isaiah prophesied that to the, to the birth of Jesus. 700 years. Now, I, I know we don't live to be, I think, 70 years the scriptures reference now. Back in those days, they lived those but they lived those long times. Methuselah, I think, was 969 year old. He's the oldest one to ever live. That's right. Methuselah. But think about it. We don't live that long now. If you live to be 100, you've done good. You've done great. Mm -hmm. If you live to be 70, bless the Lord. If you live to be 80, hallelujah. But think about it. The times are changing, and we're seeing with our own eyes. I lived in a pandemic since I've been alive now. Some people never experienced a pandemic. We experienced one. Man made, I believe, but we experienced it nevertheless. So think about it. If God of Israel gave a prophecy to Isaiah that he was going to send forth a son and he was going to manifest himself as God being with us always, always, guess what? We should see that as a as a as a Commemorable time that God is showing us right now. I'm here. Call on me. Call on me now. I look at the Bible and, it, and, and read it in Ezekiel. God showed me this in Ezekiel. And as I began to read in Ezekiel, this prophecy that was prophesied in the time that the children of Israel was preaching to go into captivity, and God began to minister something to me. So let me read this to you as we move right along. I can try to land this thing in a a reasonable amount of time. In Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 6 through 11, I read this and God ministered something to me. This is the children of Israel before the time they went into captivity. And God spread them all over the, around the world because of their disobedience. This is what was said right here. Therefore, this is Ezekiel, therefore say unto the house of Israel, watch this, Thus said the Lord, God, repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations. God is saying that to our nation right now. Repent and turn from all your idols and from the face of your abominations. Now, what's your idols in these days? Most people are idolizing themselves in these days. If I can see and say I start taking some medicines and I can change my whole biological structure, then I'm, I'm idolizing myself if I think I can do that. Then it goes on and on. But let's see what the scripture says here that Ezekiel was saying to the house of Israel in that day that reflects us in our day. Verse 7 says, For every one of the house of Israel are of the stranger that sojourned in Israel, which separated himself from me, and setteth up his idols in his heart, 
and put it the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and coming to the prophets to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. God knows, I'm going to say this because this is what the Holy Spirit showed me when I was reading it. When the borders got opened up for the United States and all the strangers and the aliens came in, God began to show me that if they don't know God, now is the time that you and I are to share God with them. Share the true and living God. But if they don't know him and they don't come to understand and they start bringing their idols in here, or bringing, that's, that's just the way it is. Some nations serve cows as gods, serve animals. Some nations build their own little gods and make them with their hands. And they got, we got so many people that came in in our country that had secured, well, partially secured borders that came in here. This is just a demonstration that God showed me. Even those that are strangers that sojourn in our country now, this is relevant. This is almost prophetic when God starts showing me this. Even though we have strangers that are joining in our country, if they don't separate themselves unto God, but they start set, setting their little idols in place in their heart, and they start putting stumbling blocks in the iniquity of iniquity in people's faces, and guess what? Believe me, you ain't heard it yet, but heard from the Spirit of the Lord. When I was hearing what the Lord was saying and doing, Doing this message, God was telling me that when they come in here and start bringing their idols and their gods and their abominations in this in this land, they gonna start getting government favor. That's right. Government favor to do their little god worshiping, because everybody got their own. Everybody's got their own thinking. Everybody is, is human. Yeah, everybody is human. But righteousness exalts a nation, and sin is a reproach to any people. That's right. Any people. So I'm telling you now, be, be aware. God showed me that when I read it. I thought, wow, God, is this prophetic? Watch it. Watch how it happens over the next three to six months, especially with coming into the election and all. When they, the strangers and the foreigners start setting up their little godly stuff, that it's going to be given to them as a day of, okay, they can have this day as a day of worship, a day of whatever. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I'm, I'm saying that very prayerfully because God put that in my heart. I didn't want to say it too vaguely, but I want you to just get a visual of what God was saying. He went on to say that right there. He said that, that the, I, the Lord, will answer by myself. And we don't know what God is going to do. If righteousness exalts the nation and sins are reproach to any people, how many times did Israel kept turning away from God and God allowed other nations to come in and destroy them? Yeah. Just be aware as you go and we go forward in land in this life. The signs are being shown. Now watch this right here. Let me finish this passage up. And I will set my face against that man and will make him a sign and a proverb. And I will cut him off from the midst of my people. And ye shall know. That I am the Lord. That's the whole thing. God wants you to know that he's God. And he don't want to know what the idols or know what the abominations before him. And when you start setting laws or setting stuff in place that's abomination to the Lord, he ain't pleased with that. That's right. He ain't pleased with that. Scripture says in verse 9, And if a prophet, and I read that, and I tell you what the Lord said to me, And if the prophet be deceived when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. And I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people of Israel. And I said, Lord, a prophet is someone that the biblical definition of prophecy is a testimony of Jesus Christ. He said, well, there's going to be many a false antichrist coming in to the play field and they're going to be speaking things as though it's done. Solid word. And they're going to be saying these things to deceive people. And he said, they, it's happening now. we got an antichrist right now. Mm -hmm. They're all for God. Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. But they ain't for Christ. They're antichrist. 
But we see that going on that's been going on. Yeah. But God began to show me that, that there's going to be some mouthpieces that's going to start speaking. And as they start speaking, people are going to believe them, and they're going to be proper lying. Proper lying, you hear me? Not proper lying, proper lying. Right. You're going to deceive many. Deceive many. Watch it now, watch it. God was showing me this, and I said, Lord, this is prophetic to me. Verse 10 and 11. And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be as even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him. So it means, he said, if you believe that lie and you follow that, the same destruction that comes upon the one that said it is going to fall upon you because you believe a lie and you said that God wasn't God in the essence of the signs that he showed you already. Thus says the Lord. Watch this. Verse 11 says, And the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted any more with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people, and I may be their God, said the Lord. All this is going to, you're going to see transitioning over the next three to five, three to six years. This is what we see. It's just going to open a door that God's going to let people know that I am God, and that if you walk according to my will and walk according to my way, then I'm going to be your God, and you're going to be my people. I'm going to walk with him. I don't know about you, but I'm going to walk with him. So when I see that in, in, in Ezekiel 6 through 11, we see that in the days of, that Jesus sought after, in the days that Jesus walked, people came to Jesus and said, show us a sign. Show us a sign. They wanted Jesus to show a sign. God began to show me this in the scripture. They sought out a sign. And they would come to Jesus, and they would come to him, and it was two different groups at times that came to Jesus. It was scribes and Pharisees, and then it was uh, Sadducees and, and, the, and, the, and the Pharisees. And the scribe was just someone that was a town clerk. He was the one that was always writing stuff down, like Matthew was. You see, the, the chosen uh, Matthew, he was always writing things down. He was a scribe. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Pharisees, Pharisees was the find that someone, the word Pharisee itself means uh, a separate or exclusively religious. So we see Pharisees right now, mm -hmm. exclusively religious people. They got no relationship. They're just religious. Mm -hmm. They're Pharisees. They, they separate us. They just separate people from the Lord. We see it going on right now. Hallelujah. And the Sadducees, the reason they were Sadducees is because they didn't believe in angels or resurrection. They were Sadducees. Sadducees. I heard somebody say it one time. That's the reason why they were Sadducees. Because they didn't believe in angels or the resurrection. <laughs> now we're going to scripture. I gave you a little overview of those scribes, what they did, of those Pharisees. It was religious sects that separated people from the Jewish law. And always calling havoc and saying, yo, People are not washing their hands from the tip of their finger to up into their elbow, trying to keep them in the law. Yeah. That's what the Pharisees did. They separated them with religious people. Oh, God, they got up and spoke these very elaborate words out in the public places, trying to make show to themselves. These were Pharisees. We see them now, but you don't see them speaking so publicly. And standing old thou, they just telling lies and people are believing it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Matthew chapter 12, 38 to 45 says this. Then certain of the scribes and the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall be, there shall no sign be given to it. But the sign of the prophet Jonah, and he said, read the book of Jonah in Jonah chapter 2. Yeah. And when he told Jonah to go and tell Nineveh to repent, 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 and Jonah go try to escape the Lord and jump up on the boat and go ride out into the blue yonder. And you know what happened. He prepared, the Bible said he prepared a, a great fish. Hallelujah. Verse 40 said, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And this is the sign. 
He said, this is not going to be a sign that y'all trying to get from me, but the sign of Jonah. As he was in the well's belly for three days, the Son of Man is going to be in the belly of the earth for three days. But don't get it twisted. He's going to rise again. Yes. Hallelujah. He's going to rise again. Verse 41 says, The man of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn them because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, a greater than Jonah is here. He said, well, I'm standing right here in the midst of You know what? I was telling my brother the other day. We was talking about some of the people that's believing what they believe in today and doing what they're doing today and standing in full pit preaching lies and whatnot and what, what, what. I said, you know what, Terry? I said, in the day that Jesus walked, they stood right in the midst of Jesus and didn't even see the coming Messiah. They didn't even see him standing there. They didn't see God was with us through his son. They didn't see that. Is this not Joseph's son? The carpenter's son? Yeah. They didn't even see that. It was a sign and they missed it. Don't miss the signs, church. Don't miss them. God is showing us right now. And we're going to get to what he wants us to do. But let me keep on. Verse 42 said, The queen of the south shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For, for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Jesus was saying, even Queen Sheba came all across the country, the, the travel, to get to see Solomon, talk to him, to hear his wisdom. But I'm standing here before you. I'm greater than Solomon. That was a sign to them. And here's the last of that scripture. It says, When the unclean spirit gone out of a man, he walketh through the dry places and seek his rest. And he find none. Then he said, I will return to my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it is, it is empty, swept, and garnished. Meaning the Holy Spirit is not occupying it. Then goeth he and taketh with himself even seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of the man is worse than the first. Even so it shall, even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. And that was in that generation that he was standing there speaking to. But what about this generation we living in now? This wicked generation. The representatives we have now, these wicked people, do you not see that that, that they wicked? Do you still stand on their side? Do you still believe in what they believe? Do you still say, I vote for you? Let's not go there. It is what it is. The sign is being shown, even in this wicked generation. And I've got to give you this because he was speaking to them in that time to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. If you go back to verse 38, he was talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But then we go over to Matthew 16, and then he was talking, I mean, he was talking to the scribes and the Pharisees. Then he was talking to the Pharisees and another group, the Sadducees. In Matthew 16, he said, the Pharisees also, with the Sadducees, came. And tempting desire him that he would show them a sign from heaven. You know what he said in that last passage of chapter 12 of Matthew, that only evil generation seeketh after a sign. He's showing you signs. You shouldn't seek after it. You should be aware of the sign. He answered and said to them in verse 2, when it is evening, you say, it would be fair weather. For the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today. For the sky is red and lowering. He said, oh ye hypocrites. You can discern the face of the sky, but can you discern, can you not discern the signs of the time? I want you to hear what that said. I'm going to read that again for those in the back. In the morning, it will be foul weather today, you say, for the sky is red and lowering. He said, you hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the time? You might even look at weather.com and say, we call it for rain next week. 
And you prepared for that rain this week. I need to get my bucket out and catch some rainwater. I need to do this and I need to do that. You're preparing for it. But you can't even see the signs of the time of what we're living in today. That, that ought to minister to you. I hope it does. The only sign that we should see today is this sign right here. Oh, he said this right here. Let me finish this fourth verse. He said, A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, as he said over in Matthew 12. And there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left and he departed. Jesus put it in the ear, said, You ain't gonna get no sign. You already have seen a sign. You didn't see it. You didn't get no more. And he walked off. Now, the only sign we get, Mark chapter 16 is where our signs come in. Watch this. Verse 15 through 20 says this. And he said unto them, this is Jesus, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Think about that. If they don't believe, they can be damned. And you might be the pinnacle one that God sends to bring them the good news, the gospel. Verse 17 says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they'll cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, they shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. I've seen those signs. You know why? That scripture says right there in the verse 16, he that believes and the baptized is saved. When you believe and baptize, these are the signs that you should bring forth. You lay hands on the sick, they recover. You, you're drinking and dead thing, don't do it intentionally. But if you do accidentally, there shall be no harm. And you shall speak with new tongue. If you don't speak in a, a tongue with a prayer language, if you, the tongue that you might speak differently, it, it, you used to be a cusser. You used to be someone that always had, ooh, the spur and agony, oh, me coming out your mouth. But now you speak with new tongue, with that which is edifying, that builds grace and builds up people. He said in verse 19, so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and he sat on the right hand of God, and they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's what's going on today. I'm going to share the gospel. I'm going to share something with people that ain't going to believe what I'm sharing is true. I'm going to bring out the things that I know that's going to be harsh to them because they've done it like this, and they've been doing it like this. But what did the scripture say while I go in Exodus? That the strangers, out of, out of their own ignorance of their own heart and their own abominations, are they doing these things? There's people doing it today. But we got to tell them the truth. We look at the scripture in John 20 and 30. I don't have it on the print, on the PowerPoint, but John 20 and 30, the Bible said, and many other signs, truly, did Jesus do in the presence of his disciple, which is not even written in this book. There was many a signs that Jesus did to show us that God is who he is. And if we'll follow after the Lord, follow Jesus, this will bring an open door that God wants to open to show people that he is the Lord. That's the signs of time that's going on now. And then we look in the book of Acts, and this happened right here in the book of Acts. This happened when they done a specific thing that God spoke for them to do, or that they did knowing that he is God. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread, and watch this, and in prayers. This is what's going to show forth the science church. Continue in the doctrine of the, of the apostles and fellowship. I encourage that person that you had in fellowship with in a long time. If you listen to this right now, and there's somebody you ain't talked to in a long time because you got separated, it's up to you. If it is to be, it's up to ye to go and make right with that person, to go and make it peace with that person. If as much as lies in you, they're peaceable with all men. Go and break bread with them. 
Go in fellowship with them. And if you need to, if you should, pray with them. Pray with them. This is what happened in that time. And the scripture goes on to say and another specific thing in Acts chapter 4. For to do whatever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold thy threatenings. You're going to be threatened in these days if you tell them about Jesus. If you tell them the truth, you're going to be threatened. But guess what? In those days, the same thing happened. He told them, Behold, Lord, thy threatenings. Grant unto thy servant that with all boldness they may speak the word. I don't care what it is or who it is. If you're walking in the truth and abiding according to the word of God, Speak the word of God. Speak the word of God because that's the sign that's going to demonstrate the power of God showing himself mighty. He wants to show himself mighty. He needs a little vessel. He needs a vessel like you and I. Verse 30 says, By stretching forth thy hand and to heal when that signs and wonders may be done by the name of what? Of the holy child of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach Jesus, and I'm going to have to tell some people some things that I don't know is going to be very peaceful or not. But I've got to do it according to the will of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is what the Word shows in which it brought forth signs. Acts 14 and 3, long time therefore a bold day speaking, boldly. See, he asked them that they may speak boldly. But then now he said that they were speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave a testimony. When they start speaking boldly in the Lord, they gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Now, you, I'm not telling you to go out and seek for miracles and look for miracles. I'm telling you to go out by the, the power of Jesus and share the good news and speak the testimony of the Lord. That's prophecy. In Revelations, they said the spirit of, of prophecy is a testimony of Jesus Christ. Preach Jesus. Preach Jesus. And you'll see the signs and the wonders done by your hand. Hallelujah. That's, just, that's the word of the Lord. Speak boldly, church. We must fully preach the gospel of Christ. I'm going to say that again. We must fully preach the gospel of Christ. Let me try to land this. Romans 15, 17 to 21 said, I have therefore... Whereof I may glory through Jesus Christ in those things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought in me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed, through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Lyconium, or Lyrium, like to come, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. So, no matter who you are, the word preach means to hurl the gospel. To hurl the gospel. So, you, if you're a pulpit preacher, you might not be a pulpit preacher. But if you're a born again believer, if you've been bought by the blood of Jesus, if you've seen the signs of what's going on now, you to preach the gospel, you share the good news, and you share forth it with boldness of who you are and who he is in the times to come. Verse 20 through 21 says this, Yea, so have I strive to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. But as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they that have not heard shall understand. In other words, in these days we're living in, from what God has shown me, if you go out and preach the gospel, share the good news, share it boldly, share it in the midst of the people that you don't think going to hear, God's going to open up their eyes to see, he's going to open up their ears to hear, and he's going to prick their hearts to understand the reality of the gospel of message that needs to be given today in the time that we're living in. The signs are here. The signs of time are here. We look at the scripture in Mark chapter 1, verse 14 through 15. The Bible says that when John the Baptist came on the scene, 
And after he was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee. He was preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Jesus was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And he preached it boldly. And he preached it with demonstration. He was saying in the time of Philip, the kingdom of God is at hand to repent ye and believe the gospel. That's what he's saying today, church. Repent and believe the gospel. Do you hear the good news? Have you heard the word of the Lord? If you haven't heard it, listen to what Paul said as we begin to close. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 through 25, from the preaching of the cross, he said, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Had not God made the foolish of the foolish made foolish the wisdom of this world? Now you see the wisdom of this world, what's going on now? It's not very wise. It's foolishness for them to tell people and to tell things and to try to do provoke uh, uh, try to provoke our children to do crazy stuff. Deception we see going on now is the foolishness of this world. Does not God bring forth the wisdom of the cross of Christ to show us the way? So here's what these few last verses said. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of the preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek out the wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. Now they preaching in that day Christ Jesus crucified. To the Jews it was a stumbling block, and to the Greeks it was foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks and Gentiles alike, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. I want to preach that to you. I want to share that with you. I want to go out in the highways and byways and share the good news of the gospel. Last verse said, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. If you just go out and share the good news, God's going to set the captives free. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 through 10 said, according as he has chosen and in him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us uh, unto the adoption of the children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us acceptable in the beloved. You've been accepted in the beloved. So let's walk according to that. Let's walk according to the beloved. And in him, the Bible said, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins according to the riches of his grace. And the last verse it said, wherein he had abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. God's good God. And he purposed it in himself that the gospel should be preached, that people should come and hear the goodness of God. That he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Verse 10 said, Then that the dispensation of the fullness of time Excuse me. He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on the earth, even in him. He's working it out, church. He's showing us signs. He's showing us wonders. He's showing us the things that we should go forth and share the good news and share the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Hallelujah. Philippians 2 and 13 said, For it is God that worketh in you both the will and to do of his good pleasure. Show forth his good pleasure, saints, by preaching the gospel with boldness, 
sharing the good news with everybody. Everywhere you go, sharing the good news of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. He came that we might have life, and that life more abundant. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, thank you for opportunity to share the word of God with you. I hope it's ministered to you. Remember some of the things prophetically that God told me. You need to go back and listen to this message. Listen to it again. But be sure you know that God has shown us these things that we might go forth and show the world that he is the Lord. And at the end of the day, that's the sign of the time. Otis, when you preach his name, he's going to show himself mighty and we're going to see signs and wonders and miracles and healings of sick and things that you never thought possible. It's going to come to fruition when we show forth the mind of Christ and the mightiness of who he is in the earth today. He's still alive, church. He's not dead, God. He, we don't serve a dead God. We serve a living God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this word. May it go out and minister to all that hear and all that receive it. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And if you ever want to do anything for this ministry, pray for us. Keep us lifted up in your prayer. And also, if you ever want to give, you can give three different ways. 5751 Mount Gear Road, Mount Gear, Gilead Road, Cedar Grove, Tennessee. 3321 zip code if you're ever in this area. And two more ways, cash out, IHP ministry, or you know, paypal.me forward slash IHP ministry. To God be the glory. Thanks again. See you in the next one. Bye for now. Love you. Praise God.